I promise you the whole day won't be negative. It won't be negative. I'm just talking about bad football teams. Jim Trotter and Ashley Nicole Moss talking about bad football teams. Well, now let's talk about a bad basketball team. And you know what makes a basketball team bad? When that team can't shoot, uh, the Lakers are really not a talented shooting team. They've got two big name players, two great players, and Anthony Davis and LeBron James. They have a former great player in Russell Westbrook, and they have a bunch of guys who, uh, you know, as a defender, you just sit there and you say, "All right, well, you got to make you got to make me prove you got to prove it to me. I'll let you have the next three. You make four in a row, I'll start to guard you. I'm not going to guard you uh, on these first three. Ashley and Nicole Moss, I haven't had a chance to get your take on the Lakers and who they are and who you think they're going to be this year and going forward. Uh, when you when you look at the Lakers, what do you see? Well, first and foremost, you know what I see? H-U, you know. Shout out to Howard. Thanks. Thank you for the hospitality during homecoming. It was incredible. Uh, shout out to D.C., one of my favorite cities um, in the country. But listen, um, yeah, the Lakers are, are in some trouble. You know, it's interesting that the team really – noticed what went wrong for them last season and really didn't make any changes in the off season to correct even a fraction of them. Right. And look, it is difficult when you have a contract like Russell Westbrook, it's very, very hard to move him, especially playing the way that he's been playing. Nobody's just going to willingly take on that kind of a salary for a player who's not really going ahead and moving the needle for you as a teammate and overall as an organization, as a team. But it's not just Westbrook. The pieces don't work. I'm a big Anthony Davis fan, but let's call it what it is. He can't stay healthy. And when Anthony Davis falls down, everything else around him falls down. So as frustrating as it is, you know, I'm sure for Lakers fans, even basketball fans, because look, you can say what you want about the Lakers as a unit and people are going to say, oh, I love LeBron or I hate LeBron. But basketball is better when the Lakers are relevant. Basketball is better when the Lakers are winning. And right now, they just don't look like a team that's going to go ahead and do much of anything in the West, especially now that the Clippers are back at full strength. Again, very early in the season to start calling who's going to come out the West, who's going to come out of the oh, East. Yeah. But I mean, if history repeats itself, especially with given the fact that the Lakers are predominantly the same exact team, you kind of already know how this story is going to unfold. It's that whole thing about insanity, right? Mm. Doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So, um, look, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret, and we're going to just keep it between the three of us, right? <laughs> and everybody okay. else. So I, <laughs> I, no, it's just it's just among us. So I cover the NFL, as you know. Last night, Monday Night Football was on. I turned my channel to watch Ooh. the Nets and the Grizzlies. But don't tell anybody. It's just That's just among us. It's, it, I'm sure a lot Ashley, of a I, million people did the same. <laughs> I, 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 right. gotta ask I won't you. tell I won't tell you that I won't tell people that you turned away to watch New York's real basketball team. The Brooklyn Nets. I just said I'm just messing with Ashley. I, I'm just messing. I don't believe that. I don't believe that in my heart. But go ahead, Joe. No, but Ashley, I'm just curious. Uh, first of all, I, I don't know if you watched the game. I did, but, of course. Yeah. Um, what, uh, let me just ask you this. What did you see? What did you take away from it? Um, there's a few things. I think I think people are impatient with the Nets because I think it's been such a long time since they've actually been able to make good on what was promised, right? And that's a winning team, a winning culture for one reason or another. The James Harden saga, then Kyrie Irving, and then Kevin Durant dealing with injury, Ben Simmons not playing and thinking he was ready to go and then not being ready to go. So I understand the impatientness of the situation, but I mean, I don't think anybody who really understands the game kind of expected this to be like, you know, instant rice and 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 60 seconds, whatever, it's ready to go. It's going to be a marathon for this team, not a sprint. It's going to take them at least 20, 25 games to really start gelling and figuring out, you know, what their formula for winning is. It's not going to happen overnight. You have a bunch of guys who have not played together 
And you have guys coming off of substantial injuries who are still trying to get a feel for their body. So I think that with all of that stacked against them, they still look decent. I think there's still times, moments within games where you can say, wow, this is going to be a really good team once they figure it out. Their coaching situation is worrisome for me. I don't think Steve Nash, you know, fantastic player, He's just not the coach that this team is going to need to take them to the promised land, right? I'm also concerned about the lack of a true big man center on this roster. I don't know how you construct a team with not even a real center. You have guys playing the five, but they're not really supposed to be playing the five. Um, but lastly, listen, let's call it what it is. When you play in Memphis, the calls are egregious. And as a Knicks fan, I know that. I've seen it firsthand. The calls are atrocious. And the calls last night were absolutely horrendous. They were one-sided. I mean, everybody on that Nets team was in foul trouble. You couldn't even sneeze on John Morant without getting a oh, foul. Wait, wait, wait. the Jordan Did, treatment this early on. in his career. It's insane. Did, Come Didn't on, John get on, the technical because he was complaining about the lack but of But then, right, but then who also gets a technical because John just got a technical, Ben Simmons. And it's like, come on, like, what are we, is this, is this high school, is this AAU? Like that last, <laughs> that last foul was one of the worst calls I have ever seen in professional Agreed. basketball. It was absolutely atrocious. But when you're playing in Memphis and you're playing what KD called the future of the NBA, the face of the NBA for <laughs> years to come, you know, you got to kind of take what's given to you. But yeah, that was an, that officiating was absolutely horrendous last night. Ashley, why doesn't Desmond Bain get more run? Um, you know what I think it is? I think that he's not consistent enough yet. I think that what it is is when you're still trying to figure out your your stance as a player, your role as a player, there's a lot of trials and tribulations with that. But listen, when Desmond Bain gets in the groove, he can shoot. Uh, we saw that last night. He can shoot the lights out. But the problem is, is he's not always there yet. He has games where he's really, really high. He has games where he's really, really low. And then he has games in the middle. So I think that once he's – and again, these you forget how young the Memphis Grizzlies are sometimes right. because they work so well together. And that was one of the reasons last season I had them going so far was because they remind me a lot of a college team, not necessarily in their skill set, but more so in their tenacity, you know, more so in their camaraderie. These are a bunch of guys who truly enjoy playing with each other. And that type of chemistry goes a long way when you're playing in tight games, when you're playing in physical games. But I think that because they're also so young, there's a lot of ups and downs with their game that it's not always consistent. I only have two questions. I have two questions Go. for both of you guys. <clears throat> One of them is a basketball question. And then, you know, we can talk ball for a little bit, but then I do have a football question before we get out of here. So my basketball question for both of you is Kevin Durant. I see in Trotter's feed and you maybe this is maybe this is only one night only Trotter, but you you hooked me. You had Morant greater than Durant. That's just one night, right? That's just one last night. night. You're not talking about. Okay. All right. So tell me what what no, what no. about John ja Morant has you has you getting all excited and you putting him over Durant even for a night is a is a big statement. Here's my thing with John. Number one, being a Warriors fan, someone who grew up in the Bay Area, uh, Memphis, obviously, I thought last year was a problem. And if John doesn't get hurt, I think they may win that series. And that's coming from a Warriors fan, right? So for me, they are a problem going forward. Um, but the thing about John now is we know about the high flying antics around the rim and all of that. But if you watch this game this year, his three point shooting is dramatically better right mm -hmm. now yeah, that's right. than it was a year ago at any point in his career. So if someone with an ability to get to the rim and the high fly around the rim now adds that three-point shot to his game, if how are you going to defend him? Because you can't go under the pick because he's going to step back and shoot the three. And if you go over it, he's going to go to the rim and score. Right. So I just see someone whose game is going to another level now, which is scary considering just how good he is. The biggest concern I have about him truly is is injury, the potential for injury with the way that he plays the game. But for me, that's why I put that. I'm not saying that he's greater than Kevin Durant. We know Kevin's history and all of that. But I'm saying, man, if he develops that three-point shot the way it is going right now. Yeah, watch out. Woo! No, I, 
I absolutely agree with that. And that was one of my knocks against him last um, season. If you watch, you know, the series against the Warriors, they knew, I think it was, I want to say it was game five or game four, maybe. Um, you saw what happened when they were playing in Memphis, those last few seconds of the fourth quarter, the entire offense, rather the defense of the Warriors knew exactly where to go. And that was to what stay in the paint. Cause that's where Ja was going to go. He's going to drive it to the basket, go for a layup, hopefully force a foul. And that was going to go ahead and seal the deal for the Grizzlies. The, so they already knew what his game plan was, but once you start adding other tricks to your you know, bag of tricks, now it's like, okay, what is he going to do? Is he going to go and shoot a mid range? Is he going to go to three point line? Is he going to drive it to the basket? And that's what makes you dangerous as a player. When you have a lot of other things, to go to what makes you not dangerous is when you're predictable in your game and that's one of the knocks against Russell Westbrook that he never really developed any other aspects to his game so you kind of know how to contain him John Morant you know is young enough to where he can like you say continue to build on certain things it's going to make him a very very hard player to stop once he goes ahead and progresses in the league much like a Kevin Durant Kevin Durant is so deadly not because he's the best defensive player on the court it's because there is not a spot on that court offensively that he can't knock That's a right. shot down so how do you defend that how can you possibly stop someone who doesn't need to go to the basket to get a point doesn't need to go to the three-point line to get a point doesn't need to go to the mid like he can get it at any angle any position on the court that's what's deadly when you face somebody like that. And Ja, if he continues to grow and develop his game, he can kind of head in that direction for sure. I've always thought the best families are ones that can have honest conversations. Uh, last time, uh, sis, uh, that you were here, uh, you were at the, I don't know if you had a little something to drink, but you were feeling really good. And you said something <laughs> about the Cowboys and the Eagles. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounded like a guarantee to me, to my ear. It sounded like you said. And I'm just I didn't guarantee it. I am not Charles Barkley. Okay. Don't put that on me. We, you we said, don't have, we don't right, have the tape. Said, we don't have the tape. Uh, we got it. Oh, we got it. We got it. it so oh, okay. we, we can. Okay. I can hear her say what she didn't say. Then I can just come back and play it. But I'm not gonna do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said though that the Cowboys would beat the Eagles easily. Is what I heard. Easily. So, easily. What's up with that? I mean, uh, are, are we uh, what happened? And are you feeling confident about the next game? There will be another game. Well, uh, Cowboys you know won what? On Sunday. You know what, Michael? I'm someone who likes to live <clears throat> in the present, and presently, Dak Prescott is back. <laughs> we beat the Lions. Yeah. We're five and two. Oh. Um, so yeah. I can't really recall what happened two weeks ago. You know, okay. I, I'm someone who lives in the moment. Um, my QB one, like I said, is back. I got my offense back together and we're fresh off a win. So I don't really rec recall that game that you're referring to, but I do know, you know, Christmas Eve, uh, Jerry's world is, is going to be a different story, a different outcome. So I, I hope, you know, the Eagles and then their fans enjoyed hey. the win that we gave them. You know, I had my backup quarterback. There's only so much I can do, but just know yeah. come Christmas Eve, Christmas day is going to be Christmas spoiled for, for Eagles fans. You got for the sure. wrong. You got the wrong what? holiday, Trotter. Trotter, wrong holiday. Look, I see Thanksgiving right there against the six and one New York Giants. You better oh, pay I'm attention also, to the Giants. I, I, let me tell you this: the six and one New York Giants are six and one because of my Dallas Cowboys. By the way, got it. Six and one because they <laughs> lost to our backup quarterback. So trust me, I thoroughly, thoroughly cannot wait to ruin their holiday. I am but very wait, excited. Okay. Yeah, I'm well, looking forward well, to it. What caught my ear was the living in the present and mm -hmm. then talking only about Christmas Eve. I'm like, yeah. what happened to the present? I thought we were the in the present. The present is looking towards the future as well. And the future. <laughs> Not the past. Yes. I just don't live in the past. Present. Like, you the past. Just close the that present chapter. Present and forward. Present <laughs> exactly. forward. Exactly. Not present back. I got it. Ashley Nicole Moss, always great to see you. Always great to hear your analysis. Uh, we look forward to catching up with you soon. Yeah, when we beat the Giants, exactly. Look forward to that. Okay, future. That's we say, future. We're yeah, saving this one too. Future. We're yeah. saving this one. Save this one. That one I'm cut. I get, listen, I'll hit my Charles one. Barkley. I guarantee it. There we go. I guarantee Ooh, there we go. it. Okay, there it is. Okay. There it is. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Right. Guaranteed win <laughs> on Thanksgiving. There is the there's a Thanksgiving parade and there's Cowboys over Giants. Guaranteed things that are happening. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us.
3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.